How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Mother SpongeBob 1000 and in this video we're going to forecast the 2022-2023 winter season for Europe and determine how much more or less snowfall you should expect compared to average in each region of Europe. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more what they call it. So to begin, a key factor that we're going to need to take a look at is the North Atlantic Oscillation because that plays a big role in terms of what type of winter conditions you're about to experience in certain um, portions of Europe and as you can see the most likely scenario headed into this winter is that we're going to be in the negative North Atlantic oscillation which will play a major role in terms of the conditions you should expect in Europe where during a negative North Atlantic oscillation in the northern portions of Europe you're more likely to experience a cooler and drier winter while the southern portions of Europe are more likely to experience a warmer and moist winter if we were to take a look at the examples uh, of what happens during a negative mode and a positive mode we see that during a positive mode the jet stream winds are a lot stronger that keeps the cold air closer to the polar regions rather than forcing it downward into the the into europe and we see warmer and more moist than average conditions throughout the northern portion of Europe and cooler and drier than average conditions um, right around southern Europe, at least during a positive mode. And during a negative mode, we see more significant jet stream dips that bring cooler air towards the northern portion of Europe, as well as warmer and moist conditions to the southern portion of Europe, as a result of the jet stream bringing a lot of troughs to the southern portions of Europe, which typically does bring more moist and average conditions for the southern portion of Europe. And we're expecting to be in the negative phase this winter for Europe. So that's so we should expect at least those sort of conditions where it's going to be colder and drier for northern Europe, which is definitely something to keep in mind. But another big factor we're going to need to take a look at is, of course, what typically happens when it comes to temperature during a uh, la nina phase because as you probably know what's gonna we're gonna be in a third consecutive la nina this year which will play a big role in terms of the conditions you should expect throughout europe because simply during la nina we see a lot more warmer than average conditions at least for the northeastern portion of europe and we see a little bit co uh, more cooler and more moist than average conditions right around the um, so right around southern Europe, focusing in or around Spain, Portugal, as well as France. It's simply a little bit more moist than average during a La Nina winter. And pretty much what um, what this geopotential height anomaly is reading is um, the temperature anomalies for La Nina year, years compared to the long-term average, which is between 1991 and 2020. And you clearly see that typically during a La Nina, it's a lot warmer than average for the northern portion of the of the of Europe and we see more moist and, uh, than average conditions for southern Europe so we should base our forecasts based on the fact that um based on what typically happens during a la nina because of course uh, the la, uh, la nina pattern um clearly plays a big role in terms of the temperature anomaly for a large portion of Europe. So that's something, something to keep in mind with this forecast as well, that if it's a little bit warmer than average for the northern portion of Europe, then you're less likely to experience that heavier snowfall or you're less likely to experience more snowfall than average this winter. Now, um, take a look at another key factor and that's a drought monitor, which of course plays another big role because simply when there's a drought, it's very difficult for a drought to go away very quickly. And since we're already in the month of November, approaching winter very quickly, that means that we're more likely going to stay in this drought in certain portions of Europe, such as Spain and the southern portion of Europe. You guys are in the severe drought. However, I do eventually expect that the La Nina effects will subside this drought to, um, right around Spain and France, but that's still definitely something to keep in mind because it's not only that um, during a drought, it's of course drier than average, but it's also warmer than average. So that of course would make it less likely for a higher amount of snow to accumulate this winter. And as a result, we're more likely to experience less snowfall than average for a large 
portion of Europe. So I think that will play a big role. The fact that we're going to be in a major drought for um, pretty much the entirety of Europe. So you, uh, so that's something, something we're going to need to pay close attention to as well. And another thing is that the European model, when it comes to precipitation, um, it's mainly expecting average precipitation this winter for a large portion of Europe, maybe leaning a little bit more towards drought conditions which would of course limit the snowfall but um but we sh but the point is that we it's unlikely we're going to see enough moisture and the temperatures are most likely going to be a little bit too warm especially for a northern portion of europe to see any sort of um to see much of a high chance that you're going to experience more snow than average this winter so for the snow lovers out there that could be a disappointment this winter but of course is just a forecast so you need to take it this with a grain of salt but just know that more likely than not it's more likely that we're gonna that europe is gonna experience less snow than average this winter based on all the factors we're looking at such as the la nina pattern the north atlantic oscillation all pointing towards this winter being a little bit too warm for much of Europe, as well as the fact that it's gonna be a little bit too dry, potentially, um, maybe more focused in on the United Kingdom in Ireland, where of course, a negative North Atlantic oscillation will take place this winter. So I do believe that that will limit the snowfall potential you'll have this winter for Europe, but there's still that possibility in some areas you could maybe experience a little bit more snow than average. And taking a look at um, what the European model is forecasting when it comes to snowfall anomaly. This is the biggest data point that really gives us a good idea of how much snow you should expect um, this year for the entirety of Europe. And we do see that the European model is very lenient on bringing a lot less snowfall than average, especially more so for Eastern Europe. We do have some isolated areas where the European model does expect uh, slightly more snow than average, such as um, a, a portion of Norway, as well as a small portion in Iceland, um, and we do have some, and we do have a little bit more um, snow than average right around central to eastern Europe. But for the most part, most of Europe is expecting a little bit less snow. Um, at least the European model is expecting less snowfall than average and significantly less snowfall right around the higher elevations of Europe. So I'd say we're more likely than not going to experience less snowfall this year for much of Europe. And take a look at my forecast map. So I pretty much based my forecast map based on what the European model is, of course, stating when it comes to the snowfall anomaly, as well as other factors such as the La Nina pattern that's going to take place as well as the drought that's taking place right now as well as the north atlantic oscillation which ex is expected to take place this winter so for much of europe i'm pretty much expecting less snowfall than average and of course if you're in the darker red it's a lot more likely you're going to experience less snowfall than average this includes places um, like Eastern Europe into Russia, as well as a large portion of Norway as well, and extending to Iceland as well, you should expect much less snowfall than average. And this is as a result of the North Atlantic Oscillation, which typically does bring drier than average conditions for much of Northern Europe, as well as the fact that I do expect this um, winter to be a little bit warmer than average thanks to the fact that a large portion of Europe is under a drought and typically um, we do see um, warmer than average conditions during a drought. So I do expect much of Europe to experience less snowfall than average this winter in the areas where maybe you could fall more in average when it comes to snowfall um it's more so right around western europe that's where the highest possibility you will experience maybe above average snowfall such as france um, spain and the southern portion of the united kingdom in ireland but i'd say for the most part the snowfall anomaly should at least um fall right around um average to below average this 
this year so that's at least something to keep in mind for this winter but if you want if you guys want an even more in detail forecast regarding the um how much more or less snowfall you should expect this winter just make sure to comment down below your specific location and i'll make sure to give you guys more in detail forecasts regarding how much more or less snowfall you should expect this winter so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but yeah guys i uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.